What's up guys, Bjorn here, I hope you're doing fantastic. Dragonflight is just a few days away from launching, so I figured, hey, what better time than right now to hop in on the balance route and do a little video. I'll be talking mainly about Mythic Plus today, how the balance route feels in the upcoming Dragonflight season, its strength and weaknesses, how the tuning is, and what we can expect from it in uh, Dragonflight Season 1. I wanted to start off with the changes going from Shadowlands to Dragonflight, and there hasn't been too many for the balance route, but those changes that they made are actually really nice, and I think the balance route has been improved a lot in terms of gameplay, and I actually find it quite more enjoyable to play right now than I have for a long time. And the major reason for that is the Starfall change. They basically reverted Starfall to how it just work in Legion. Now you can once again stack however many Starfalls you want to do massive AoE damage, you can uh, extend your dots etc and it feels really good when you have that astral power coming in and you can actually spend it on something in AoE. So massive upgrade here uh, on the Starfall front. Another really nice talent is Celestial Alignment going into Orbital Strike here because Orbital Strike will lower the cooldown of that uh, Celestial Alignment by a minute so you're now on a two minute Celestial Alignment talent or sorry, you're in a two minute celestial alignment timer. You could pick incarnation with that as well. It's really strong in keys. So, um, and then obviously also orbital strike does a massive amount of AOE damage and applies still a flare to all the mobs in front of you. This combined with the starfall change means that you f really feel like you're pumping when you're popping your CDs on, on an AOE pack and it feels great. Now the problem is you're not actually pumping in terms of the numbers, but we'll get there later. Convoke is still there as well. If you prefer to play with Convoke, you can definitely do that. Lens Guidance. The talent tree in general isn't too great in my opinion, especially the capstones are really, really weak and you'll end up uh, much better off if you just spend more points up here. One nice addition that they added is Wild Rush Rooms are coming back. These are great on AoE. The point beneath them is really strong as well. And uh, you can basically use these to gain some astral power on AoE to do big burst damage. On the class side, you could pick up a lot of uh, good stuff here for basically for free. You have Nature's Vigil, Renewal, Heart of the Wild still. You can pick Typhoon and Ursula's Vortex. And you could even go like in to get a kick or to get some movement speed over here if you wanted to. So there's a little bit of versatility here in the talent tree. I will say the Druid class tree is spread a little thin over all four specs, I feel like. So maybe it isn't the most fun talents in there, but um, at least you have some, some choice. The last major change that we got is actually got Mark of the Wild back. And this is now a 3% versatility buff. 3% verse is basically 3% damage, right? And it also has a defensive component. So very, very, very strong raid buff. Very strong in dungeons as well. This instantly jumps uh, Druid to basically the best utility in the game probably. Because not only do you have all of those things that I just talked about. There's those Vortex, you have Trees, you have Solar Beam. The thing is though, the other Druid specs are actually all super strong right now as well. So. Choice, uh, chances are you'll end up maybe bringing one of those instead. So how does it feel to play in Mythic Plus then? Well, I would actually say it feels pretty great right now. All of the changes that I just mentioned with Orbital Strike, 2 Minute uh, Celestial Alignment, the Wild Mushrooms, makes you a lot more versatile. You pump a lot more when you're pumping as well because of the Starfall overlaps. And it feels great as well when you're popping your CDs, you, you really feel like you're doing damage. And definitely having a lot of fun with Balance Druid. The question is, does it do damage, right? And this is where we run into some issues, because not only do they nerf Starfall damage by a lot, uh, your dots aren't really doing that much either. So even though you feel like you're pumping and you're uncapped, um, in reality on those big packs, you're probably going to lose to the majority of the specs in the game still. Sure, you do have some pretty decent burst when you're popping uh, you know incarnation with your trinkets and uh, with the orbital strike as well so when you have all of that going on then you definitely do do some damage um, and you can compete with with some other specs in the game for sure but over the course of the whole key you're definitely going to be a little bit more lackluster right we all know how little balance root actually does when you're not in cds since we're running a pretty aoe focused build as well here the single target damage isn't great so you'll end up uh, not contributing too much on the bosses either. Now I am, I am maybe exaggerating this this damage deficiency a little bit. I still think the balance rate is competitive. I mean, it, it can it can perform. You're basically gonna do average damage in a key, right? You can see here on my last key done that you know it, it isn't terrible by enemies, but it's just the fact that uh, you know you are an uncapped AOE class and when you pop all of your CDs on that massive uncapped AOE and you just spam starfalls like five starfalls in a row and you still just end up doing like 200, 300k DPS, that feels pretty bad. And I don't know how Blizzard fixes that really uh, without making us broken, but yeah. Balance are definitely not in the best spot. 
Instead of talking about the damage, let's just send it here on this little 4 target pack. My Starfall is probably going to hit a few other mobs in here, but that's fine. We'll just take away that damage later. If we can sustain like 120k AoE, I'm going to be happy with this battle straight. So let's just uh, get right into it here, I guess. Okay, we're going to enter an Eclipse before going in, so we can we can get a, a little free Starfall there. Let's pop our big CDs. Send that Orbital Strike in, feels pretty great. Uh, should have star struck earlier, maybe, but that's fine. And the one thing you wanna wanna do to maintain the damage here is just like keep keep an eye on your Star Lord stacks. That's basically the, the one thing. Uh, and I should be redotting here as well with the Stellar Flare, I guess. But I'm lazy. Oh no, I just I just misplayed as well. But uh, you can see we're doing like 160k here. That's pretty. That's pretty interesting. That's a little bit more than I was expecting. I wonder how much of that is uh, on these other targets, but still, not too bad here. We'll uh, just get these stellar flares up again, I guess. I think we'll keep the pull going until uh, until 1.30, um, just for consistency here. But you can see, even with some suboptimal play, we are actually maintaining quite a bit of, uh, of sustained AoE here. I'm a little bit surprised that, uh, that the Balancer was capable of this. I wasn't really performing this well in my key, I felt like, but maybe I was just bad. I actually haven't had to refresh like Moonfire or uh, Starfire or sorry, Sunfire the entire pull so far. Maybe that's why I'm doing so well. I'm just keeping the dots alive on an infinite pull. And balance is just not gonna work that well in keys, right? Because you actually have to to redot stuff all the time. Things are gonna die. But yeah, 100, 150, 120k sustained AOE there. Obviously, three percent of that was also on the raiders training dummy, so a little bit less. But still, I think that's still a little bit promising. If the packs live really long, if you just get to stand there casting for you know, a minute on, on a big pack, on a big pull, on a really high key, then uh, yeah, Balance Root might actually be worth bringing. You do, as I said, have that really strong utility with Mark of the Wild. You have uh, Solar Beam still. You have all the good stuff in, in Ursals, Typhoon, Mob Control, um, all that good stuff. So, and off feeling as well, actually, with Nature's Vigil, uh, Renewal, Heart of the Wild, etc. So, if you, um, if you want to play Balance Root, I think it's definitely going to be uh, fine, but yeah. That usual syndrome the balance read has, where it doesn't really do too well on low keys, on packs that die quickly, that's just going to be exaggerated even more this season, I feel like, and um, you might have a rough time in those low keys because of that reason. So what are my thoughts on the balance read in Drive Flight Season 1 then? Well, from a gameplay perspective, I think it's a lot improved from Shadowlands. You have new spells, your Starfall is a lot more fun to press, you feel like you're pumping on AoE, or build strike and a 2 minute celestial alignment feels amazing. Um, from a damage perspective, I think it's a bit worse. I think Balance Raid might be one of the worst casters from a damage perspective right now in Mythic Plus. And added to that, right, you always have that uh, low key syndrome on the Balance Raid where if you step into to a low key where everything is gonna die, then you really feel like shit. So those uh, two things combined, the tuning with the low keys, it makes balance rate probably not the best idea if you if you're a pug player if you're uh, mainly doing like up to 15s just for fun then uh, i could see maybe another spec performing better than the balance rate but if you're enjoying star falling if you're enjoying the, the moon kid and the chicken uh, playstyle, i think from a gameplay perspective this season is going to be a ton of fun you're going to have a blast on the balance rate you're going to be able to provide a lot for the group as well with that three percent verse buff in particular so not a bad, not a bad season for the balance rate, I don't think, but from a damage perspective, yeah, you might be a bit lacking. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed Dragonflight, I hope you tried some different specs, have some fun on live when it launches, and uh, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Have a good day, see you in the next video, bye bye. Huh? Oh, you're still here. Well, I'm sorry, I think you should uh, probably go and check out a video maybe over here or somewhere here. You can even subscribe down here, that would be really really nice, I would highly appreciate that. Uh, I'm gonna go snort some more lines, see ya! <laughs>